York and welcome to another episode of Here's Lisa. Hi, and I'm Lisa. Welcome to my show. Tonight we have TV, radio icon, Mr. Joe Franklin. Joe has spent his broadcasting career chronicling the legends and in doing so has become a legend himself. Mr. Joe Franklin. Whoa, what a nice introduction. I want to write that down. We'll use that <laughs> in the future. I just want to wish you much success, Lisa, on your new talk show. The world does need new talking heads, new talk shows, and you've got the looks and the uh, intellect and the curiosity to ask good questions, and uh, I think you're going to be the new uh, Joan Rivers or uh, uh, who's uh, Barbara Walters or whatever is of the moment. Mm -hmm. I really am very honored to be this is your first show, right? Yes, it is. The premiere. Yes, it is. Well, I'm very excited. I couldn't have asked for a better person. I mean, you created the talk show. Um, a lot of people, especially the younger people, they don't know Mr. Joe Franklin and everything you've done for entertainment, for talk show, for um, the whole business. So can you just give a moment and talk about Well, again, again, thank you. It's, I am a legend in my own room. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my own mind. And this is uh, so nice because the, the, the gimmick here, the feeling is that, that the new kid on the block is being welcomed into the arena by the man who more or less innovated the talk show. That's me. I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records, you know, for the world's longest running, see, the longest running TV show or TV talk show. I've interviewed more than half a million guests. Uh -huh. There have been 28,000 episodes of the Joe Franklin TV show. The people that we... Uh, uh, have voted into office the one that we should the people we should be a little little kinder to but uh, I don't think it's good for the morale of the country to to hear the president put down every night and the vice president but I didn't mean to interview you you're interviewing me I'm sorry no well you know what I never expected to be the interviewer when you're on my show <laughs> I know you just are a legend and um, I knew you would be doing the interviewing. How did you break into the talk show field? It's a good question. I was a kid. I was about 15 years old. I got a job choosing the records for a man named Martin Block on a very popular radio program called the Make Believe Ballroom. And he liked me, and he got me my own show. And one day I get a phone call from Channel 7. It was, it was WABC TV. Now then it was WJZ TV. There's, there's a joke. We like your style on WNEW. And we're lighting up now in the day. There was no daytime TV yet. There was only nighttime TV from 5 o'clock till sermon. He said, Joe, we want to give you an hour a day. What kind of show would you do? I said, how about if I do a show of people talking, nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball? They said, Joe, you're out of your mind. You can't have people talking. It's a, the word is television. You can't do a talk show. What do you think the secret is to the longevity of your profession? That's a great, that's a fantastic question. In a, in a field where the mortality rate is so staggering. While I, while I was on TV, 500 talk show hosts came and went. Five, the, main, the main ingredient for the word, I like the word longevity, the main ingredient is sincerity, sincerity. And once you've learned to fake that, then you got it made. You know? <laughs> I think the main thing is to look in the guest's eyes. And uh, even if you know the answer to the question, suppress it. Let the guest be the star. Let the guest shine. Don't flaunt your own knowledge. And uh, as I've uh, mentioned a couple of times, uh, don't bump into the furniture. And, and equally important, don't leave your wallet in the dressing room. <laughs> that can be fatal. And you had a good point. You said let the, the guest be the star. You've done so much for so many people, the beginnings of their careers, and you, you just let them shine, and they've become icons because of that, from you being there. Well, that's very well put. I did give the first, nobody discovers anybody, but I gave the first exposure ever on TV to Barbara Streisand, Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson five times with the Jackson family, uh, Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Tiny, remember Tiny Tim? Mm -hmm. I was. Remember when he was married on the Johnny Carson show? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I was invited to that wedding, but I couldn't find a formal shopping bag, so I didn't go. <laughs> but I was. I gave the first exposure to Bette Midler, to uh, Bruce Springsteen, Eddie Murphy, and I guess Liza Minnelli. The list goes on and on. And I'm. Uh, people always say, "Do they come back?" Most of them don't come back because I, I symbolize. I represent to them the time they were broke. They hate to be reminded of those days. Uh, a few of them come back. You know, uh, Bill Cosby is one of the greats. There are people like that who do come back, but I, uh, I, uh, I had I was Presley on when he was first time in, in the world. The first time I had him on the same panel with a lady named Anne Margaret Olson, 
who later on dropped the Olsen and just became oh, Anne Margaret. Margaret. And later on, they made a movie together, I think, Viva Las Vegas. I forget. So it's, uh, I saw a list in a magazine recently, at least, of people who never appeared on a talk show. It said, it said Charlie Chaplin was never on a TV talk show. It said John Wayne was never on one. It said Cary Grant was never on one. I had them all. The ones who were never on, I had. But Did I you call them and correct nah, them? <laughs> no, no retraction. I just, I had them. Uh, so the, just the fact that I had them is satisfaction enough. Yeah. I had them all. You I, really let people shine, and you you gave a lot of people who nobody would give a chance to. They you took them in, and you nurtured them, and you gave everyone. You gave a lot of people a chance, and. That is well put. Garth Brooks didn't have car fare to come to the studio. I gave it to him. New Kids on the Block didn't have car fare. So I've, uh, I've done uh, a lot of uh, what you would call uh, down deep discovering. So who, who were one of your one or two favorite interviews that you'd... Well, I had five U.S. presidents. I had Ronald Reagan five times. Never as president, but as, say, as, yeah. as an actor. And later on, as the, at first he was the host of... Uh, 20 Mule Team Borax program called Death Valley Days, and then he had the GE Theater. I had Bill Clinton, I had, uh, I had Gerald Ford, I had Jimmy Carter about 15 times, I had Richard Nixon. He lived in the Saddle River, and my studio was in Secaucus, and he, he was a big fan of mine, and he would uh, come to sit in my studio. And I'd sometimes, when there was a little uh, Lowland dialogue, I'd, I'd put him on the camera, and he was, he, he was a fan. I think that. Uh, uh, I gave the first exposure to uh, to uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen and a uh, few like that. So it's fun. It's fun. So what are you what are you the proudest of in your career, well, your written, life? I've written 24 books. My new book is called Joe Franklin's Great Entertainment Trivia Game. It's already sold 45,000 copies. They're all in my house. I'm only kidding. No, no it's now in. <laughs> so if anybody wants a copy, you know where they are. Right. I, I live in a cardboard <laughs> box on 11th Avenue. <laughs> And uh, I've done my first paperback now. It's called Joe Franklin's Great Entertainment Trivia Game. And I guess I'm proud of the fact that uh, I was honest, I was sincere. The, the, you know, the audience can spot. Like if I'm doing uh, a rock and roll uh, 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 idol, no matter how big, the audience can know that my heart is not in it. My heart is well with the old timers. But uh, I try to, uh, I try to uh, make it look as if I'm enthused. Because the audience can tell if you're bored or not enthused. They, you know, they can read between the lines. And I used to make the same acid points as uh, some of the so-called hard-hitting TV hosts. Somebody would write in the column once in a while, Joe Franklin, did he really say what he said the other night? And I did say something strong, but I was so cute and adorable and lovable and huggable and kissable <laughs> and, and baby-faced, I could get away with it, you know? So I did, uh, I innovated... Uh, Business news and TV. I had Carl Icahn on, and people like that, and I invaded uh, weather reports on TV. And uh, I was the first drama critic on TV to, you know, be a first nighter. You're still um, the first night opening for Broadway. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Bloomberg uh, critic for Broadway shows. I'm on Bloomberg Radio all day and all night, you know, and uh, weekends all an eight-minute segment, and, and during the week it's a, it's a one-minute segment. And I uh, hope one day I get Lisa Rosenberg on there. there Wish go. you good luck on this show. <laughs> Thank you. What do you. What's your opinion of, I know you said they're a little harsh, but what do you see the future of talk show, of television in general? I know there's a lot of reality shows. There's a lot of things on TV now that, you know, the younger generation are being exposed to at an early age. and. Um, just what's your opinion? I don't want to uh, seem gloomy or pessimistic, but I think it's going downhill. And reality shows are popular because they're very low uh, in cost to produce. So but I think that's going to reach saturation. I think that uh, quality may come back, may come back, but uh, nobody knows. It's uh, anybody's guess. I think that uh, the uh, TV talk show will endure as a place for a program such as yours. And uh, I think that I've uh, done my contribution to, uh, you know, I've had, I've had uh, Bing Crosby. Now, nobody had Bing Crosby. I think that's the only TV show he ever did in his life. I had uh, Frank Sinatra four times. I had... Uh, Milton Berle. Milton Berle. Oh, I had 
there's nobody. Uh, the only one I didn't have really is Greta Garbo. I always wanted Greta Garbo, but she, uh, and we were very close. We'd go to retrospectives or movies together, and she would listen to me on the radio. And if I played some Greta Garbo soundtracks, I would hear her crying in the background on the phone because her, her companion would always call me and say, Mr. Franklin, Ms. Garbo appreciates what you're doing, but she wouldn't go on anybody. But I had everybody except Greta Garbo, I had everybody except Ms. Garbo. So why, why did she, 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 she wouldn't appear anywhere. She was offered an open, uh, a signed check by movie studios, by TV show, talk show hosts to uh, appear. She, 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 she made a movie about 1941 called A Woman's Face. Oh no, Two-Faced Woman. And she looked at the screen and I don't like the way I look. I've made enough faces. And she walked away forever from uh, And uh, because of that, she remains a legend. We, keep, we, think of Greta, we think of Marilyn Monroe and Greta Garbo as the way they were. Mm -hmm. If we saw them the way they looked when they were 80, it would, it would kill the illusion. Yeah, I actually saw a uh, James Dean movie last night. It's another one that... I broke him in. He was uh, in a show in Greenwich Village, I forget what it was called. And uh, he was a very dear friend. He was, he was crazy about James Cagney. So I arranged that by my panel with James Cagney. That was one of the highlights. The Bing Crosby show, would probably, uh, that, that had to be, I always thought of Bing as being what you would call mechanically reproduced. I thought of Bing Crosby being on records, on film, on radio, on television. But when he walked toward me, flesh and blood, I think I melted, at least. I think that was my all-time favorite interview. Out of, out of half a million interviews, I think Bing Crosby was my favorite. Did he sing on your show? He sang White Christmas. And we had a background of Morris Katz, the instant artist, painting a Christmas scene at Bing's request. Well, I hope it was around Christmas time. <laughs> I, think, I think it was Hanukkah. No. <laughs> Christmas in July. Deck the halls with matzo balls, right? Yeah. No, but Bing was the, my favorite. I had uh, Loretta Young, mm -hmm. Kate Smith, the God Bless America lady. And uh, I think I, the one I really wanted was Ed Sullivan. I, I used to love the Ed Sullivan. Did you ever watch the Ed Sullivan show oh, when yeah. you were a kid? Mm -hmm. And he was on with Jackie Mason. I sort of made peace with Jackie Mason and Ed Sullivan. They had a big feud going. And uh, Did you I, have them both on at the same time? On the same panel. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I had, uh, I had uh, what they were called an eclectic mix. I never had a talent coordinator. I was the boss. I, would, I could feel in my mind the chemistry who'd go well together. I would have the whistler, the, 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 the man who whistles through his nose on the same show with Margaret Mead. <laughs> I, would have, uh, I would have the dancing dentist on the same panel with Ronald Reagan, you know? And, and, and you can't not. And that's America. You brought it all together. You, and you know, in my business, you're not held on by, uh, by people. You're held on by a rating machine. If the rating slips, you're out. So the fact that I held those ratings for 43 years is uh, a tribute to something or other, right? Is there any question that you wanted to ask someone and you just didn't, and then you regretted that you didn't have the... That's a good uh, thought. I, I held back many times because I figured I don't want to get too personal. There were so many things I was dying to ask people about their personal romance, about their personal life. And uh, of course, you're always warned what you must not talk about. There's always a retinue with, with a big star. They'll say, Joe, like when I had on uh, Jane Wyman, they said, Joe, you mentioned Ronald Reagan. She gets up, she walks away. But I said to myself, how can I not talk about the president of the United States? You know, they were divorced. She was, she's, they had a very unhappy divorce. But I, I did a whole hour on, on Ronald Reagan. She didn't walk away. She loved it. There were so many people that I wanted that I, I was afraid to ask. They scared me. I'd meet them in elevators. People, Groucho Marx, always looked so grim, so dour, so sour. Fred, I don't know if you know the name, Fred Allen. Fred Allen was a great radio humorist. Mm -hmm. He had those big bags under his eyes, looked so mean and evil. George S. Kaufman, Bert Lahr, remember Bert Lahr, the Cowardly Lion in Wizard of Oz? Oh, yeah. He scared me, but in every case, in every case, after they were gone, after they were dead, I found out from their relatives or their friends that they were only waiting to be invited onto the Joe Franklin show. So the point I'm making is that you gotta be a little bit aggressive. And uh, if you want a certain guest, go after it. But I never had a talent coordinator. I could, I could feel in my mind who'd go well in the chemistry department, and I, I tried, I tried a talent coordinator once, but it didn't work out. He, he turned down Hedy Lamarr, he turned down uh, George Brent, who made all those great movies with Betty Davis. So uh, I, I, that, that upset me. I decided to do all my own casting, my own talent coordinating, and. Uh, do you think maybe that's why it lasted so long? I, because I think, you had I the... think that's important. I think that's important. I, I, I could feel the public pulse.
What motivated you to just like get up every day and and go out and? I enjoy and, I enjoy meeting people and and so many. I don't mean to get heavy on this, but I, many times when I had a, a small guest figure, I don't mean small in height. I mean a guy who's not famous, <laughs> and, and a, a superstar came to town for that day, and he was only available that day. I would not bump the little guy for the big guy. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't want to break people's hearts. No, you have a good heart. You have a saying. What was that saying? Never say no. And Joe Franklin has. I uh, yeah, I, I never learned how to say no. That's that's a weakness of mine. I keep people uh, hoping and waiting, but uh, it worked. Whatever it was, it worked, right? Yeah. I meet kids all the time, and they tell me their homework is to uh, watch the Joe Franklin show, or listen to Joe Franklin on the radio. And that that's uh, that's gratifying. It's very satisfying. When did you start feeling like, oh wow, I did something and. People respect me for that. The time I began to feel that, uh, Lisa, was when I became quite popular with the university at the, at the, at the campus level. The, the, the college kids like me, and uh, you re uh, kids love you of all ages. I mean, you just relate to everyone. I, uh, it's amazing. It's you nice. It's, it's pleasant. It's fun to be recognized in the streets, and uh, people yell at me. I met Charlie Rose the other day. He yells out, Joe Franklin, so loud. I was embarrassed, you know? <laughs> Woody Allen. Woody Allen likes me. I'm in every one of his movies. Yeah, I was going to say. If not acting, he'll show my TV show in the background, or he'll have my voice, or he'll say, Joe Franklin, is he wearing a toupee? You know, he's a, he's a, so he's a nice guy, Woody. So go out and get the Woody Allen shows and look for Joe Franklin in them. <laughs> Broadway Danny Rose is one of them. I'm in Ghostbusters. Yeah. I mean, How many films did you do? You about did 25. 25 films. Always playing myself. Once Was that I, a hard role? <laughs> well, once they told me I'm not the type to play myself. <laughs> they got Billy Crystal to do it. Billy Crystal did me for four years on Saturday Night Live as Joe Franklin Takeoff. First time I saw Billy Crystal as me, I said, Billy, one of us is lousy. <laughs> Billy, he's hot. Yeah. He's good. I heard you studied medicine, too, in college. Well, I, I took medicine in college. Yeah. yeah. But I feel better now. Mm. I, really, I do. <laughs> I love jokes. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a gag writer. I would sit in front of the radio and write down Jack Benny's jokes and Eddie Cantor's jokes, Bob Hope's jokes. I figured someday I'll recycle them. But then I got sidetracked as a radio personality. Did you want to be in radio yeah, deep yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to write, be a writer. And in radio, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed uh, having my own show when I was 15 years old, you know. Is that a record for having the youngest I, I think I've been in radio show? longer than anybody else. But is that a record for starting the youngest as a, probably? As not, not far off from the record. It's got to be close. And uh, I still love it. You know, getting the body to the studio is a pain in the neck. Once you're on the air, it's fun. But getting the body, I'd rather just... Uh, well, you still do Bloomberg every oh, week. Oh, yeah, I'm on Bloomberg all day, all over the world. With some... It's tremendous. And that Bloomberg is 11.30 a.m. And by a coincidence, you know, that was a coincidence. By a coincidence, WNEW, where I started way back when, it's 11.30 a.m., so I've gone full cycle after, oh, wow. after 7,000 years. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I've got... Uh, There's other things you're doing now, too. I mean, you just never quit. You have two comedy clubs. We've got one in the restaurant called Charlie's O, Charlie O on, on 45th Street and 8th Avenue, and the new one in TGI Friday on the 50th Street and 7th Avenue. Jackie Mason sits there and I, Joan Rivers came in there, Bill Cosby's coming. And I, I love stand-up comedy. I like the bricks, the red bricks behind you, you know, because you secure a feeling like the world's going to collapse. And I do a little comedy myself, a little stand-up comedy. Play trivia with the audience. So if you want to see Joe, you can find you at the comedy club, usually on a Friday and Saturday night at the... In the flesh. In the flesh, right now. Um, on Friday and Saturday nights, what's the first show at nine o'clock? About nine o'clock. About nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, and that's at seven. Th that shows at the Fridays, at mm -hmm. seventieth. And I just came back from the coast where I made two pictures, one facing this way, one facing that way, <laughs> and I passed my screen test. So starting next week, I'll be selling screens in Macy's. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I don't really do comedy, but I, I enjoy jokes. And, uh, I've seen your show. When Joe gets up there, the whole stage just lights up. You really just, you know, even the younger kids, I mean, you don't have to use foul language. Um, no profanity. Yeah, and, and you're just amazing. I just love watching you. And well, you always had good taste. No, I I'm going to be watching your show, too. Are we ever going to see the Joe Franklin 
Three well, tapes? We've got a DVD work in the, in, in the hopper called The Best of Joe Franklin. That's uh, potential. We're working on clearing some of the rights right now, which is not easy. And uh, if not, I can sit and play them at night in my own house and enjoy it. <laughs> and invite the whole well, I'll go to Joe's house to watch them. Yeah, I got to. Uh, well, I live now in a cardboard box on, on Ninth <laughs> Avenue, so. So there's lots of room. Yeah. I'll we'll just borrow some more boxes. But you're, it's a, it's a blossoming field, and I think that uh, there'll always be a chance for young talk show hosts to make it. People love conversation. They really do. I think I broke the ice on remotes, on outside remotes. I, my, my first remote, I was about, uh, about 18 years old, and I did the Coney Island uh, Mardi Gras parade from a tree in, in, in Coney Island <laughs> with one camera on Channel 7. I wanted to quit before I got evicted. Uh, they were putting me on later, later at night after the infomercials, you know? But the infomercials bring in about $40 per half hour, and my show would bring in maybe 40 cents per half hour, you know? So, but I figured that uh, I was on uh, one thirty, two o'clock in the morning, you know, prime time, I want to get so, <laughs> so I told the station that I'd rather conclude at the end of the current cycle, and they were kind of stunned. I was replaced by Arsenio Hall, who did a great job. There you go. So he followed my footsteps. And, you know, I'd like Arsenio Hall. Is he still around? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if he's got his own TV talk show anymore, but I'm sure he's, he makes movies and things like that. Remember that show? Yeah. When you were a kid. Who, who, who? That's the guy. <laughs> That's the guy. And uh, as I mentioned, it's so gratifying when kids say their homework was to watch the Joe Franklin show at night. Kids would go to broadcasting school. And the big thing today now is voiceovers. People are. Uh, making a lot of money, you know, doing commercials, and uh, it's it's a fun. Game.